Okay, we're on our way to Beyond Cafe in Thailand. I like to do my online work at cafes, wherever I'm at in the world. I like to sit at cafes and do the online stuff that I do on my phone and computer for work, so we're off. We're on the way, cruising over about, it's only about a mile or a mile and a half from here, about three kilometers people using the metric system. Get some views of Thailand here. It's pretty interesting. I know this is not what we're used to seeing in Western countries, just going down the street. heavy ass on there. Couldn't make it up the curb. Okay, now we're head inside the cafe. Let's go. basic exercises in it, you know, he needs like compound exercises in it, he's doing like a lot of isolations and stuff, so, but he wants to put on some serious maps, so I gotta get him off, you know, the face pulls uh, for his, you know, first exercises, and I gotta get him on the bent over barbell rows, um, <laughs> yeah, so, that's what I'm doing right now got peppermint tea here. I'm on the first few days of a ketogenic diet right now too, so I'm a little tired. But I kind of notice every time I start a ketogenic diet, what I notice is that um, the first few days, there's, there's not a lot of emotions. Yeah, so they have this cool outside part of the cafe too. So I'm gonna ask a Thai person to explain it to me. <laughs> what is the the big cup? What what is it? What is it for? We call this Thai uh, banchian. Thai banchian? Yeah, it's own. Uh huh. Around uh, 21 years old. Yeah. And what do they use it for? Uh, for food on the water or something. Oh, to like pick up water? Yeah. So to pick up water and take it somewhere? Yeah. They will like bring that here to yeah. take some water? Yeah. Okay, okay. I understand. Oh, it looks like there's some school kids that we're going to be walking by in a second. In Thailand, all the school kids wear uniforms. Okay, great. We're on a two-person bike now. It rained while we were in the cafe, and now it's nice and cool outside, because that's the problem, is that a lot of times in Thailand, it is so hot that it's crazy. Um, so like going outside and doing like activity, is something that you would do more like in the evening or at nighttime. More because of the weather here. Yeah, this sweet two person bike. My first time ever. Suspension bridge over there. It's like a mini Golden Gate.
Okay. We've got a big bridge coming up here that we've got to get over. Oh shit. Uh, so we're gonna need both sets of legs pedaling hard to get over this bridge. There's a giant clock. Oh, the bridge is closed. Or is it open, part of it? I think there's an opening. Yeah, there is an opening, yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Got it. <laughs> ah. Got that. Ultimate bike riders. Double. bike rider <laughs> and some students So I am on a ketogenic diet right now and this is the first few days of the ketogenic diet. So right here I have chicken wings to eat. And so the thing is with keto diets is that if you try to eat them with like chicken breast or something like that, some kind of like very lean meat, it's gonna 
you know, you're entering a starvation scenario at that point, and so that's not the way to do it. And so ketogenic diets are like one of the most valuable tools, like in bodybuilding, for example. Um, but you got to know how to do it, and knowing how to do it is not eating chicken breast and uh, you know white fish and stuff like that. You, especially when you're starting out, the first few days of the ketogenic diet, you need to eat like a fairly high fat meats, like yeah, you know pork, beef, you know, fat chicken with more fat on it, etc. And then once you're deeper into the diet, then you can just, and you're totally used to being in ketosis, so being in a state where, you know, your body is running on fat for fuel instead of glucose, then, you know, and you're comfortable with that, then you can just take days where you don't eat much. And those days where you don't eat much, 100% of the energy will be coming from your fat cells. So, eating this uh, chicken here. Tasty. Like, my first time coming to Thailand, man, culture shock, just because you're not used to the way things look. Another thing that happens with culture shock is you're no longer, when you get to a new country, you're no longer able to predict what people are going to do by watching their body language. Because the body language in those countries is different than the body language that you're used to. It happens to me every time I go to a new country. Well, a new culture. Like if I'm in Eastern Europe, it's Eastern Europe body language. If I'm in South America, South America body language. If I'm in Asia, Asia body language. Like for example, one thing is that you know in the in the West when we say hello, we go like this, put our chin up. In Asia, when they say hello, they put their chin down. Like that, the chin down, so it's exact opposite body language for identical communication. There's a university around here, but I don't see any school kids right now. This is super funny marketing right here. This girl gets this shampoo and look at the guy behind her like, oh my gosh. makes a difference in my life. Thank you, D3. 